right, it's January 2nd, 2019. In this video, we're going to take a look at the daily time frame for the dollar yen. Very often at the beginning of the year, one of the things I like to do is, uh, is, is organize my thinking and my strategies and try to project into the next three months, six months, and then of course for the rest of the year. Sometimes you can see at the beginning of the year, and I don't mean this every single time, but sometimes you get an opportunity to see that trends, certain trends are just now starting to develop for the most part. But this one actually started December 2nd. So I'm sorry, December 20th. December 20th, 2018, we had this breakout here. Again, this is the daily time frame. So what we had was a range of consolidation. We talked about this when it broke out of support here, December 20th. I talked about that uh, the fact that it's printing that continuation signal candle, that setup, that's a strategy that I developed. The continuation breakout trade is a strategy that I developed back in 2001. And what I was doing was trying to figure out a way to safely trade breakouts and not get stuck in head fakes. I hated head fakes. I joined a few chat rooms back in 2001 and they were operated by people that just had a limited amount of trading the Forex. And whenever price would take out a high or a low, just all it had to do was price was just taking out the high or the low, the chat room moderators would call a buy or a sell. But it seemed like most of the time, like 80, 85% of the time when they would call out these trades, we would do what they said and then price would reverse and go back inside of consolidation turning out to be a head fake move and then we would all get stopped out and when i would ask the question why did that fail why did that trade fail they never really had any answers basically the chat room moderators would tell me that's just the way trading is you have to accept losses you have to prepare for losses if you can't handle losses do something else that was basically their answer that wasn't good enough for me when i went off on my own in 2008 to figure out a trading system that i created and that would work for me, I really wasn't sure what that was going to look like. I had a limited amount of experience as a trader. I just knew that the only way for me to figure it out was to approach it in a very scientific way and document everything that I was doing. So this continuation breakout trade, it's a strategy that I've been using since 2001 and it works the same way today, 2019. It will always work the same way. And I use it on the daily time frame. I use it on the four hour time frame and I use it on the one hour time frame. When I use the continuation breakout trade on the one hour time frame, I can use a much smaller stop loss, obviously, but my targets are going to be different. In this situation, the daily time frame, I'm obviously looking for uh, take profit levels that are much larger than I would if I was trading intraday on a one hour time frame. It doesn't mean that I have to get in on the trade on the daily time frame, but I want to identify the key day that we saw a breakout of consolidation because we can go back to December 20th and figure out based on the data that was available that day. Even if you just simply opened up the chart and you were looking and said, you know, that's interesting. There's a candle that closed below that, that range of consolidation. Why? So something happened that affected either the dollar or the yen or both. And it had an impact here. And that was the catalyst that created this, that, that initiated this breakout and then this trending move. That's what the continuation breakout trade is. It identifies the breakout. I can confirm the breakout and then I can trade the, the trend that develops in the direction of the breakout afterwards. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We need targets before we even decide to get into a trade, whether I'm executing the trade on a one hour time frame or the daily time frame. I still need a target. Otherwise, there's really no point in getting in the trade. Uh, of course, you can get in and, and change your mind and your opinion all the time when you're in an open trade and uh, scalp. You know, I don't like to scalp. Uh, it's very tempting to change your take profit levels in a situation like that. So I need a target every time I get into a trade. So in this situation, we were fortunate enough to have a good clean A high, a B low, and then this approximately 786 retracement range right here. For the most part, the candles really aren't going any higher than that. As far as where they close, there are a few spikes that go above the 786. But for the most part, the candles are holding right around that 786 area. So that gives me two projected price targets. Now we talked about this last week. We talked about that when we trade the dollar yen to the downside, there's a few things that we want to be paying attention to throughout the day to make sure that when we get into our trades, we're trading in the right direction. 
And we also want to be aware of this move here. It's, in my opinion, the retracement, as deep as it goes, it's not as likely in most situations, uh, it's not as likely to go to some of the uh, final ext Fibonacci extension targets. So I want to be aware of that. I know it's going to stall at one point or another. But again, back to what I was saying a moment ago, last week we talked about this, that we're likely to see a convergence of the extension targets based on this price swing and this breakout to the downside versus this uptrend and using the Fibonacci tool here. We're likely to see a convergence around that area where we have a downtrend and then an old uptrend. And that new downtrend could turn out to just be a pullback overall and then a bounce back up again later. So we want to be prepared for these possibilities. So again, based on the depth of the retracement, the Fibonacci retracement levels, I would be more suspicious about its potential to reach some of these further out extension targets, as opposed to, let's say, trading off the 50 or the 618. If the retracements were just to the 50 or the 618, I would be more likely to expect price to uh, clear some of these uh, further extension targets. But again, paying attention to the possibility of it reaching an area where there would be a convergence of, uh, you know, an old retracement and an extension level on these two different directions based on this prior move. So if we go back over here to the left, we can see that in 2007, that's December 2000, I'm sorry, 2017, December 2017, January 2018, February, and then March, that's where it bottoms out and then starts this new uptrend all the way up until the breakout here, December 20th, 2018, and now we're moving back down. Now, whether or not it continues and takes out the lows from March of 2018, I, I guess that's a possibility, but we'll know that when it happens and it's not going to drop straight down. It's going to create these opportunities where we get second entry opportunities, meaning that there's going to be pullbacks, there's going to be retracements, and it's going to give us more uh, another opportunity, more opportunities to trade if this is, in fact, a downtrend to the downside. I'm not calling that. I'm just saying that at this point, it was easy to trade this over the last few weeks based on the breakout on the 20th. And then I'm going to show you the um, uh, another area, something else that you can use as confirmation when you're day trading this. So if we look at it uh, this morning, I saw a lot of people fighting the trend here uh, early this morning and then last week in, in the dollar yen. They kept posting things like I'm, I'm uh, buying the bounce on the dollar yen. And this was even last week. And I kept thinking, you know, why? Why? When we see this trend, we see all of this strength, this yen strength. So if we go over here, this is a chart that I use on a regular basis. Whenever I trade the dollar yen, I'm going to be looking at this chart as well to help me uh, gauge confirmation. This is Japanese yen futures. This is not a currency cross pair. This is just Japanese yen futures. And here I get to see a lot more depth, a lot more um, in, in transparency into what's going on with the yen. This is the daily time frame for the dollar yen. I'm sorry, this is the daily time frame for the Japanese yen. I use this as confirmation to help me execute my trades in with the dollar yen. So when we see Japanese yen futures, when we see price moving higher, that would indicate yen strength, which means the dollar yen chart would then be moving to the downside. Now here on the daily time frame for the dollar yen, at this moment, even though we saw a pretty good bounce this morning after we had already closed off positions here to the downside, at this point, I still don't know that the trend's over with just yet. Yes, you could probably buy a bounce and scalp it back up. But again, as far as any indication as to whether or not this downtrend is over with, I don't have that just yet. That could change at the end of the day. Remember, we only analyze closed completed candles relative to the time frame that we're looking at. That's a key. You, that's a very key understanding in your analysis. I only analyze closed completed candles, meaning that in order for me to decide to start buying up the dollar yen here at this level without this candle closed and the day, you know, in the books and out of the way, I would be assuming at that point, not having enough confirmation.
And I don't want to trade that way. It is difficult to trade that way. Sometimes you'll be right. Sometimes you'll be wrong. I am all about confirmation. It is much easier for me to trade in the direction of the trend with the majority of the market. That is one of the reasons why I've been able to stay in this business for the last 18 and a half years is the fact that I'm waiting for confirmation and I'm trading with the rest of the market. I know a lot of people like to counter trend trade, you know, they're, they, you know, if they see price moving down, they're going to find and pick an area where they can buy a bounce. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't like to trade and be in a situation where I'm thinking to myself, sometimes these trades are going to work and sometimes they won't. I want to know that every time I find a trade, I'm more likely to, or I'm very, very confident that this trade is going to work. So, Again, going back to what we see here, I, I, I made this video because I see a lot of people uh, trying to buy the bounce. Now today, obviously at one point, you could have bought the bounce here and traded it right back up and done okay. But if you did it too soon in the day when it was falling this morning, which a lot of people were trying to do, they were losing a lot of money. They were fighting that trend. What is that trend? Go back to the daily time frame and have some things in place that will allow you to determine when there's breakouts. What is consolidation? What does that mean? It's very subjective, a lot of these things. And you have to put some structure to these different components that will help you identify the overall conditions of the market. Is it trending? Is it inside of consolidation? When I developed this continuation breakout trade method, one of the first things that I needed to do was figure out a way to quantify what is consolidation? What does that mean? And of course, it's in my own terms because this is a strategy that I developed. But that's what I did. I had to figure out what is consolidation. It's really subjective. Two different traders can look at the same area of consolidation and they see different things. <clears throat> so what I did was I figured out how long consolidation should be in place to actually uh, be determined or classified as consolidation. <clears throat> that was my first step. The next step was once I found some of these breakouts, what ranges from the highs to the lows would be appropriate? Meaning that sometimes when ranges are too small and too tight, if there is a candle that closes outside of a range that's too small, it'll turn around and go back up inside of consolidation sometimes. And again, it's because there's not enough room. It hasn't experienced that movement that normally is associated with consolidation. So I have to make some adjustments. So throughout that testing back in 2001, I was able to qualify a consolidation, how long it needs to be in place to qualify as cons uh, uh, consolidation, and then the highs and the lows to determine that once I finally see that candle that closes outside of that range, now I know I'm at the beginning of something. I'm at the beginning of a trending move. Last week, one last point I want to bring up to your attention is this retracement. This, I'll go ahead and open this up, this strong uh, retracement here, this bullish candle. When that was happening, I made a few videos and I sent them out. And I said, at this point, I cannot say that the trend is over with just yet. Let me go ahead and open it up one more click and we'll go right back to that candle. That was the candle that I was talking about on that day when it closed. I said, at this point, I don't think that the trend to the downside is over with. I don't have enough information. I see that the candle is closed, but very often when we see a range of consolidation that's been in place for a while, when it finally breaks out, price will usually, not always, but usually go back and retest the level that it broke out of. And that in itself is a healthy breakout and trend. When it turns around, it's almost like confirmation. When you get these second entry opportunities to then sell it again, you know that you've got that confirmation. This is a very classical and very uh, common and healthy retracement. Noticing what's happening, not immediately saying, okay, well, we were in a previous uptrend and now we see it bouncing, so it must be over. It's going to go back up there's not enough information at that point other than what has happened so far and what usually happens. Again, the retracement. It will usually retrace and retest the level that it broke out of, whether it's to the upside or the downside, whatever direction you're trading it in, just remember that. So as we saw that, I said, we've got to be aware of what's happening, not what we want to have happen. That's sort of that mind uh, control that you have to have. You have to be aware of that process. Are you looking at the charts in a way that you're nervous and you're worried and you're wanting it to do something or behave a certain way? So you're ignoring what's really taking place. You want to be careful that you don't let yourself fall into that frame of mind, that way of thinking. Be aware of what's going on. 
So again, this was a really good move. Today, this was a pretty strong bounce this morning. But again, at the wrong time this morning, people were trying to buy this bounce and they were getting knocked out of their trades all morning long. Again, at this point, I don't know that the trend of the downside is over with just yet. I would expect that it could make another move lower. Again, with the indicators that I'm looking at with this open live candle, I would assume that it's not over with just yet. But when this candle closes, if things change, then I can analyze that candle once it's closed and try to determine if this trend is over with or if it's really going to show us some kind of a bounce here. Now, this could print a hammer. Of course, I would need a little more confirmation after that. I wouldn't immediately start buying it here and saying that it's going to go back up to the highs. We want to be really careful with it. But again, pay attention to closed, completed candles relative to the time frame that you're executing your trades on.